Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line <laughs> is the mayor of New York. No, well, he's not. He can run for it now. That's for darn sure. He's the general manager of the New York Jets, who I've been uh, eager to have on this program and thrilled that that day has finally arrived, the day after the draft in Las Vegas. He is the general manager of the Jets, Joe Douglas. How are you, Joe? Rich, how you doing, man? Long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller. Fantastic. <laughs> Joe from Florham Park, you're on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Joe D. from Florham Park. <laughs> oh my gosh, Joe! Um, I love Sauce Gardner. I've, I, he, I, when I saw him at the combine, uh, just for a minute, just for a minute, there he is in his business suit, you know, uh, showing up because it's, a, it's, a, it's an interview for him. He had his bling, and I think the, the, that's the two things about him is that he's all business, but he's, he's, he's also um, somebody who brings some pizzazz, and he's really good. What was your first impression of Sauce? Joe. Just like a suit, like um, he's all. It's like uh, instead of business casual, it's like business swag. Like that's what that's what he's about. Like he's a unbelievable competitor, um, very confident, very authentic, very comfortable in his own skin, um, and then ultra talented on top of it. And uh, you know, he he just from the very first time we got a chance because he was always high in our process. But then when we meet him at the combine, he comes in on the thirty visit. I mean, everyone just falls in love with the person, and then the the tape is very easy to fall in love with. So, how do you use him? What do you what do you got for me on that front? What's the sense about him? What well, I think do? I think Coach Sala, Coach, Coach Ulbrich, they're uh, they're they're in heaven right now. I feel like um, I feel like our our secondary is uh, is upgrade in general uh, with adding um, ultra competitor and DJ Reed, and then. You know Bryce Hall and, uh, and and Eccles just played their hearts out uh, this year and, and and had a lot of good snaps on the uh, on the field for us last year and so I um, feel like we we have really good depth and um, Sauce is going to come in here he's going to compete he's uh, obviously adding to the group and you know I'm sure uh, Coach Sala and and, uh, and Coach Albrick are going to have some good tricks up their sleeves nope. in terms of how they're going to deploy him and so uh, when I mean how nervous were you when the Texans were on the clock on that front. Extremely nervous, very nervous, um, because I, you, you'd heard that uh, that they were on onto a corner, and so it's just at that point you just you know you're crossing your fingers and, and hoping that uh, that your guy's there. And um, when um, when when they made when they turned in the selection, it was uh, it was like pandemonium. Do you even do you even call Nick Casario at some point? Did you do anything like that? Did you even knock on anybody's door above you, or you just decided you're, we're just going to stay put and let chips fall for the lack yeah, of better I think, Vegas? Yeah, I think race? we decided early we were going to we were going to let the chips fall. You know, we felt good about our, our list of players going in, and we, we felt like we had ten guys that we loved. Um, and so if, if if it fell a certain way, we were we were we were going to be okay with it. Joe Douglas here on the Rich Eisen Show. Walk me through the the Garrett Wilson selection. Uh, what, why and and what you see in him with Garrett Wilson? Yeah, that was another moment in the draft room where we were holding our breath. But with with Garrett, you know, for us when when we were watching him, it was just a combination um, of things that he does really well for you, uh, just in terms of the route skill. Obviously, the the production, the route skill, the um, the the ball skills, um, the run after catch, the the ability to, to take teams vertical, uh, to get behind defenses. He can run run by people as well. So felt that that uh, he was just the best all around receiver in the draft. And um, there were a few hurdles that we had to go through, uh, get by in the top ten. And um, again, once the uh, once the Seahawks turned turned in the offensive tackle, we were. It was just elation. Well, now I know I'm going to ask you about somebody who's on another team, and I know that that's a dicey situation, but the concept that, that number 10 overall pick you used on Garrett Wilson, was that in any way, shape, or form potentially sent in the direction of San Francisco for Debo at any point in time? Joe? Oh, um, look, it, there's, there's a few discussions um, with different teams leading up, leading up to the draft. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, we we made the decision that the right path for this organization was going to be to to build this thing through the draft, and um, you know, we were we were fortunate that a player like Garrett Wilson fell to us at ten, um, but couldn't be more excited to add him to that to that room because we feel like we've got some 
dynamic playmakers. You know, Elijah Moore, um, he was he was really coming on before his injury. Corey Davis, um, another guy that got hurt, but was, he was on pace for a thousand yards. Braxton Berrios, he stepped in in the back half of the season, came on and Pro Bowl punt returner, and just fired up to have him back. And so. I uh, feel like we have a, a good room. Well, what is the sense, do you think, in the league right now, Joe, of the wide receiver position? And I know that's a, a broad question, but I'm about to, I guess, fine point it here because I've got Howie Roseman on in hour number three. He acquires A.J. Brown, who's in, you know, entering year four, uh, nine-figure contract, uh, at least on paper. Um, Debo, as we know, has been, it seems, is asking for a new deal. We saw Tyreek Hill who I believe you also were in on, um, but you now have drafted somebody who, I, if I'm not mistaken, the life of Garrett Wilson's contract might be less than some of the annual salaries that were handed out to young receivers. What's your sense of the receiver position in paying those young guys in the league right now, Joe? Yeah, well, I think you've seen over the last few years, I mean, the receiver position is a premium position. You know, when, you, when you're talking about uh, that group of players, I mean, it's, it's up there now with pass rushers, uh, offensive tackles, corners, quarterbacks, it's, it's, it's getting up there, right? And we saw the market explode. Um, when you see, you know, Christian Kirk getting, getting the deal he, he got and, you know, Mike, well, a lot of, a lot of good young players got the uh, high contract, got big contracts. So, um, you know, that, that, that market's really, really taken off. So, um, ultimately for us, um, going through every option, coming through every single option, um, we just made a decision. Hey, let's uh, let's let's keep drafting guys at this position. Um, we've got Elijah. We've got Garrett. Uh, we've got Denzel, who's who's been doing great, uh, coming back in OTAs in phenomenal shape and, and working working his tail off. And let's have let's have some guys that can kind of be on the same parallel trajectory as our young quarterback. Joe Douglas here on the Rich Eisen show. And then, okay, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was speaking on behalf of all Jets fandom. This would have been enough. I'll be honest. The first two, the first two picks would have been just okay. That's that. That's Joe Douglas getting it done, and then Jermaine Johnson keeps falling. He keeps falling. When did you start to get the sense that okay, this is possible that we could trade back into the first round and get him? When did that happen to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously after the Garrett pick, we were all celebrating. Um, <laughs> just felt like these two guys. Um, I mean, it was it was an ideal scenario for us yeah. going into the draft to get those two players. Right. And then um, I think we're getting around um, Houston's pick. Um, I think they traded back, and so uh, Robert he hits me on the shoulders like Jermaine's falling, Jermaine's Jermaine's falling, <laughs> and uh, we looked at each other, and he's like, "Let's go get him." Like, yeah, let's do this. And so um, you know we're fr- you know frantically calling teams and trying to jump back in and I uh, obviously there's a lot of teams they don't want to go back that far um, they want the fifth year uh, option um, so ultimately we worked it out uh, at pick 26 with Tennessee and um, couldn't could not have been more excited uh, that that was probably because uh, that was just like the cherry on top of, yeah. of Thursday night you know because uh, we had our ideal scenario play out in the top 10 and then this happened that was a little surreal for us because I imagine if that you said you, there's ten players that you liked uh, in the top ten, he he had to be one of them, right? Didn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> he was right there. So when the Titans traded to go uh, get Traylon Burks and send um, AJ Brown um, to Philly, did that? Do you think that helped open the door for the Titans to be more willing to cough up twenty six? Do you think, Joe? On that front, I, I think so. I think um, having having a player in the boat uh, that they they obviously um, loved and, and were able to get, and so I think at that point they might have made them a little bit more comfortable in, in coming all the way back to thirty five. Amazing. Why do you think he dropped? Any sense of that at all, Joe? For that? No, yeah, for you know you <laughs> you you catch yourself maybe asking a question like, "What's going on? How's this happening?" But. Um, we felt so good about about uh, about this person on and off the field, and uh, we, we this was this was the first time since I've been here that we were able to bring in players on pre-draft visits, and so we we couldn't have had a be- better visit with Jermaine, and so we're just sitting there and and we 
can't believe this is happening, but it's like, okay, let's just, we're going to get this done. So, um, we're just we're just happy we we got everything worked out. Damn straight. And then uh, I, I, this this sounds like like those Chris Farley interviews on the Saturday Night Live. <laughs> like, and then tell me about when this thing happened. <laughs> it's awesome. It just it's just awesome. This. <laughs> Remember when you took Gary Wilson at ten? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then at Brees Hall. I mean, this kid is so good. And then you traded up. Remember that time you traded up two spots and got Brees Hall? This That was awesome, too. I mean, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And with Michael Carter, that seems to be a very dynamic combination. Um, what, what did you see in Brees Hall? Say, let's go get him top of second round. Joe, what was that like? For you? Yeah, that one was, um, look, again, it's it's really, I wish I could tell you there's some, like, magic trick or special sauce it was just us following our board um Brees was our 18th rated player and it was like um this is an opportunity to 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 go get one of the more dynamic uh players in the draft the the best running back in the draft pair him pair him with uh you know some 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 pretty talented running backs in, in the room currently and you know feel like now we have one of the more elusive backfield tandems in the league now um with Michael and and Brees and uh, just just his ability to not only score from any point in the field, um, getting the ball handed to him, but also a dynamic threat in the pass game, um, really natural ball skills, uh, can cut on a dime, can make people miss, and his juice and acceleration to daylight, it's it's as good as, as any back. Dan, then you get Ruckert on day three. I'm sure I'm sure you saw the video of his dad, right, in his, in their Long Island living room. This is like the Jets coming to go get him. Uh, how good can he be? Because every Ohio State friend of mine, oh, pardon me, every the Ohio State friend of mine says that <laughs> that that he just got overshadowed and didn't get the football as much as his skill set might have, uh, you know, required or demanded because of everyone else, including your tenth overall selection, who was there. Yeah, Joe. I was a little worried at that point that we may be getting an F grade from you, taking two Ohio State guys. But, um, <laughs> it's okay. They can't get that far down the alphabet, Joe. <laughs> you know, it's so, okay. So um, that, that, was, that was a cool moment because uh, our very first day down in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, I'm staying on the field and I was talking to Coach Middleton, um, who was the head coach that week and also our tight end coach. And uh, Jeremy runs up to us, and he's talking, and he looks at me. And I was like, "Oh man, I'm, I'm glad you're here this week. Thanks, thanks for competing." He goes, "You know, you, you know, I'm from, you know, I'm from, I'm from New York. You know, I'm a big Jets fan." I was like, "Yeah, we knew that." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, "I'm so pumped up. I'm so pumped up. You guys are coaching." I was like, "Man, we're we're fired up to work with you. Um, what an awesome, awesome person. And uh, again, another guy that brings a uh, high level of competes, loves football." loves loves to love to battle um a guy that uh he he had to do the dirty work in this offense a lot and uh he was he was beating his head up against the wall with some of these defensive ends and he was he was working hard for his running back and then when he had the opportunity to showcase showcase his talent in the passing game he he showed that i think you saw that in the playoff games the last couple of years and um excellent ball skills a uh, guy that can separate from safeties uh, he can run uh he's he has a chance to be a really good player. Well, in the few minutes I have left with you here, uh, Joe Douglas, look, uh, it's fun. It, 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 a hell of a draft, obviously, um, and it, it's, as you know, a quarterback-driven league. What can you tell me about your expectation level for a year one to year two jump for Zach Wilson, Joe Douglas? What do you think? Well, I think, first of all, it was really, really cool to see him do his, his – uh, nationwide tour jumping from nashville to florida to arizona working out with his teammates um building that building the chemistry building the camaraderie so i think i think he's he started taking that next step i think he started taking that next step when he came back from injury in year one um when we, we were pretty banged up as a group as an entire team and um you know we we didn't have Corey. i don't think we had Corey and elijah at one point in, in that stretch over the last five or six games and uh, he was executing the offense at a high level and taking care of the ball. And, um, I think I think things started to slow slow down for him a little bit um, towards the back half of the season. I think um, the way he's attacked, uh, working with his teammates, building the bond, the way that these guys are out all out here right now um, during OTAs, working together, uh, it's really cool to see. So he's just those guys just got to keep stacking days, 
keep stacking days and weeks and months, and and uh, that you'll see that progression. And how is Makai Becton? How is he doing? Makai's down in Dallas. He's working out with Duke Mannyweather, um, rehabbing from that knee injury, and uh, you know, getting ready to have a little baby here soon. So congr- congratulations to to him and his girlfriend. But uh, yeah, uh, he's doing well. He's doing well, and. You know, we can't wait to get him back up here um, after after his uh, his child's born, and um, you know I, I know that he's fired up to to, to get back here and, and work with his teammates so, as well. So if he's with Duke, does that mean we'll see the videos of him uh, split box jumping soon? Is that what you're saying, Joe? Where's yeah, I mean I think there I think there's been some videos that already. I'm not a big social media guy, but I think <laughs> there's been some good videos of. Uh, of him working, working out, and so he's. Uh, you know, we've been we've been staying in constant contact with him and his and his medical team and Duke, and um, feel good about where he's at, and okay. uh, you know can't wait to get him back up. Okay, Joe. Look, man. Um, all I wanted to say is just uh, thank you, uh, not just for calling into the show, but for what you've done, and to ask you uh, in any part of your evaluation of Sauce and your leaning towards Sauce and wanting to get Sauce. Um, what was there at any point in time uh, an influence uh, from a, a certain host that you might be talking to right now who's been pounding the table for him for about seven, eight weeks? I don't know if that's part of the evaluation process there for you, but... You know, um, I may okay. have gotten a little bit of that information via uh, a, f- a mutual friend mm-hmm. that maybe shares a desk with you during, <laughs> during draft weekend, that there is some love. Um, so I, that, that message may have been okay. received leading up to the draft. Okay, very good. I, I, I will accept that. Um, and just again, on behalf of me and my brother and my nephew and everyone else that we know um, in Jets fandom, uh, oh my gosh, great job. Congratulations on that. And I can't wait to see it all play out in the fall and beyond. Joe, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Rich. Talk to you soon. You got it. Thanks, Joe. Right. You bet. That's Joe Douglas, the general manager of the New York Jets, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Just a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of love. A lot of love in the room. I wasn't listening. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.